Hi and welcome back to a new video in our visa series. In the last video, we explored frame elements and mentioned that we would be taking a closer look at creating a menu in this context. And that's exactly what we're going to do in this video. So here in the main page, we have this frame in which the menu is realized. To the menu, function block is passed, which is defined in a global variable list. There's also a feature in use here that allows us to switch menus on different clients independently. For this purpose, each client receives a unique zero-based ID. In this case, the system variable current client ID, which then makes it possible to manage data in the application on a client-specific level. In the global variable list, an array of client data is created where client data contains only the menu FB. So this means that the client has its own menu FB, which it can switch or set certain values. So that's the first part of the menu. Now let's take a closer look at the structure of the menu. First, there is the parameter interface. That means the client independent menu FB is passed into the menu. The menu itself then consists of a list of individual menu items, each with its own parameter interface. This allows us to pass the text to be displayed, the graphic, the position in the menu, and the menu FB to the menu item. For the menu item, the frame configuration was used again to be able to pass parameters. And the interface to the menu item consists of a text variable with the editor type text. This means that the text assigned here can also be multilingual and can be switched via the language changer, plus it can also be displayed offline. Here we specify the graphic to be used and finally down here the position that is set when the menu item is clicked. In addition to this interface, the menu FB is passed via var in out and also a local variable for the element color is specified. The menu item itself consists of different elements. First, there is an element for the background. For the background color, we use style colors here. Their advantage is that they only need to be defined in one central place and can then be used throughout the entire project. Now, we'll take a closer look at how this works with the visualization styles in a later video. The next element is not mandatory and is included here just to achieve a nicer offline display. And here in the next one, we define the image we want to display. We use the image variable image var from the interface and pass it to the bitmap ID variable. In the next element, we configure the text to be displayed again using a variable from the frame configuration. And important is this last element down here, which is on top and serves as input element. And for this purpose, both the frame and the fill color are invisible. And in the input configuration, then different actions are realized. So on the one hand, the hovering, where the hover color is set when the cursor enters the element area, and the background color is set again when it leaves. And on the other hand, what happens when the element is clicked? So it will change back to the background color. The position which was passed to the function block is assigned to the page. And finally, height is assigned to the menu so that the menu automatically moves out again. All right, so what does this all mean in a nutshell? Well. We can define anything we need within this item and then use the item multiple times within the menu. In the main visualization here, we can then also immediately see what the menu will look like. And now at runtime, we can also see very nicely how the whole thing then works together using the overlay feature, which we'll take a closer look at in the next video. We can let the menu fly in first. And when hovering over a menu item, the color changes as desired. And when clicked, the page changes accordingly and the menu disappears again. And of course, client independent operations also work. While we operate the menu in this client, 
the menu in the other client remains unchanged. So perfect. Now we have a nice overview of how to create a menu. If you want to take a closer look at it yourself, just take a look at the sample project that accompanies our video series or try your own visualization right away. So have fun and see you in the next video on overlay functionality. Bye.